Hello, this is Dr. Cooper from Princeton Spine and Joint Center. I received the following question. It says, hello, Dr. Cooper, I hurt my back a few months ago. I rested it and took Advil for two weeks. Slowly it's gotten better, but I'm concerned that it might come back. How do I prevent my back pain from returning? This is a great question. Acute lower back pain like that is so common. It's actually the most common reason that people see their doctor and preventing it really is, a, really is the key. In fact, whenever I see patients who are in pain, I tell them that of course we're going to get them out of pain and that's priority number one, it has to be. But then we have to make sure to leave, to leave the person with a solid strategy to help him or her prevent the pain from recurring so we don't end up behind the eight ball again. Okay, so first of all, to the question at hand, one thing to do is to look at why you got the back pain in the first place. Maybe you just lifted something really heavy with bad technique and so you know how and why it started and you never plan on lifting something that heavy again and the next time you do lift anything, whether it's heavy or not, you're going to lift with good technique. That's a, that's a very possible scenario, but it's actually the exception rather than the rule. Most people aren't sure what they did to bring on their back pain. Or they do know what they did, but they always do it and they really can't avoid doing it. For example, like taking a long daily car ride to work or sitting all day at work or lifting their kids over and over, or putting them in car seats, etc. It's important to try and understand why the pain came in the first place. What repetitive actions might be causing the pain? Once you've done that, consider if there's a way to avoid or improve the situation that got you into the problem in the first place. For example, if you do have a long commute, can you take breaks so that you aren't sitting in the car for so long at one stretch? Ideally, ideally, every 20 minutes you could get out of your car and stretch. Now maybe that's not realistic, maybe it is. But perhaps if it's not, maybe you can get out and stretch every 30 or 40 minutes of driving and then continue on. If you're sitting all day at work, then get up every half hour and stretch, even if it's only to stretch for 20 seconds or to go for a quick walk to the coffee machine. If you're playing with your kids, can you lift them with better technique and hold them closer to you rather than with your arms extended, which will take a lot of the pressure off of your back when you're doing so? Once you've looked at all of those things, the next thing to work on, and it's a really important next step, is to bulletproof your back as much as you can. What does bulletproofing your back mean? First and foremost, it means to get the muscles around your back stronger and more limber to support your spine better. Specifically, you're gonna to wanna to learn and do your back exercises before you have pain. This is that old adage of an ounce of prevention being better than a pound of cure, and it's very true when it comes to spines. You can check out our uh, video on exercises to do to avoid back pain. That's a great place to start and make them a habit and do them daily. Your spine will thank you tomorrow, but just as importantly, maybe even more importantly, your spine will continue to thank you in five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years and longer if you start the exercise now and commit to them. Now, some more good ways to avoid recurring back pain include sleeping with good ergonomic position at night. This means if you're on your back, place a small or medium-sized pillow underneath your knees. If you like to sleep on your side, place that same pillow, but put it between your knees. And if you like sleeping on your stomach, try to not sleep on your stomach. It's not the best position for your back. What you're looking for with these sleeping positions is to keep your spine in good ergonomic position at night. This keeps the pressure off your spine and helps it to recover each night. And here are some general things to avoid. Don't bend forward at your back and then lift something up, no matter how heavy or light that thing may be. That's an important point. Always bend with your back straight and put the force through your legs as much as you can. You can check out our video on proper lifting techniques for details on this. One of the most important points with this is that most people remember to lift correctly when they're lifting something particularly heavy. But then their technique goes out the window when they go to lift something light, like a drop pencil or a golf ball. Remember, no matter how light the object is that you're picking up, you're always lifting your body weight through gravity. And you may have a very healthy body weight, you may not have a healthy body weight, but it's still a strain on your spine no matter what your body weight is. So you wanna lift with good lifting technique each and every time you lift something, no matter how much it does or doesn't weigh. That's all for now. I hope I've answered your question fully and I hope everyone else has also found this video answer to be useful. And if you have enjoyed this video and if you've learned something, then please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, 
and tell a friend who might also enjoy the videos because that's the way that we can spread good health information and achieve good health outcomes together. As always, if you have any questions that you would like for me to answer in a future video, you can reach me at drcooper at princetonsjc.com or you can leave a question or a comment at the end of, in the comment section here. Okay, thank you very much.